right, the time is 7.37. I'm going to call this meeting of the mayor and council to order. Today is Monday, April 13th, 2015. Councilman Krause cannot be with us tonight. She had the opportunity to travel to Italy, and um, we hope she's enjoying her travels. Everyone else is present. Uh, first, we'll have the invocation. I'll ask everyone to have a moment of silence. Thank you. Tonight's announcements on April 14th, we'll have a Board of Appeals meeting. Uh, they'll have a 7 p.m. work session and 7.30 p.m. meeting here at City Hall. On April 26th, you can watch a rebroadcast of the March 23rd Council meeting on Comcast Channel 25 at 6.30 p.m. On April 27th, you will be our next regular scheduled Council meeting. We'll have a 6.30 p.m. work session in the conference room and a 7.30 p.m. meeting here in Council Chambers. The April 28th Planning Commission meeting has been canceled. And on May 2nd and 3rd, come out and join us for the Snevel Days Parade and Festival. The parade will be here around the City Hall area at 10 a.m. on Saturday. And the festival will begin, will be Saturday and Sunday. You can take a trolley from Snellville First Baptist over to the festival uh, once you come out for the parade. So please come out and join us. We have um, tonight, Ms. Sims will come forward and lead us in the Pledge of the Flag. Thank you. Um, for the record, that's Ms. Patricia Sims. Thank you, Ms. Sims, one of our citizens and one of our veterans. Um, we have no ceremonial matters tonight. We have our minutes. Do I have a motion to approve the March 23rd, 2015 business and public hearing minutes? Minutes, yes. Okay. Motion to approve the minutes of March 23rd business and public hearing meeting with the addendum that one typo would be changed and that would be uh, all that was required. <laughs> Can, he uh, wants to change can, fright to freight. Thank you. Um, and I'll second. Thank you. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. That's six and excuse me, five in favor. All those opposed, zero opposed. The motion stands approved. Do I have a motion to postpone the executive session minutes of February 23rd and March 9th? Motion to postpone executive session minutes from February 23rd and March 9th until the next meeting when the corrected minutes can be provided to everybody. There is a motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Five in favor. All those opposed, zero opposed. The motion stands approved. We have no invited guests tonight for committee department reports. I do not see Mr. Williams, correct? Okay. Um, Mr. Bice? I do not see Mr. Bice. It's going to be an even shorter evening. Mr. Kirkland, I did see you earlier tonight. Mr. Kirkland with our URA. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the Urban Redevelopment Agency uh, has conducted three visiting sessions, sessions in Snellville during the past two months. Uh, the first was at South Gwinnett High School on uh, February the 19th, and the second one was at, was at Brookwood on March the 12th, and the third was at Briscoe Park on March the 19th. Uh, I'd like to thank Eric Van Otteren for his planning and facilitation and leadership during these sessions. And I'd also like to thank the mayor and council for their support and participation during these sessions. And special thanks I'd like to make to South Gwinnett High School, Brookwood High School for letting us use their facility, and also for Lisa Platt at the Parks and Recreation for her support during the Briscoe Park session. And lastly, I'd like to thank the citizens of Snellville who took their time to attend the sessions and provide their input into what their vision of what the future of Snellville should be in 2050. 
we had about 10 areas of interest that we asked the participants to comment on following the, uh, to comment on, and the following is a condensed summary of some of their thoughts. Um, one of the th questions we asked was, what would you keep about your neighborhood or the, and the city? And they mentioned three items that were most important to them was Briscoe Park, small town feeling with events like our fall festival and the senior center, center. And we asked what would you change about your neighborhood or city? And uh, they really were the two main things were create a viable town center and most other things were touched on in the other specific categories that we talked about. Under community, they liked safety, fire, police and emergency service. They would like sidewalks throughout the city and an even mix of senior and young families in, in, our, in our town. From the cultural as aspect, they would like to see an art center or gallery with, large, from our, with our large uh, art community, um, a destination music venue, outdoor concerts and theaters, and more upscale restaurants in, in our downtown option. For our, the economy around, they would like more healthy food choices like Trader Joe's, more small and medium businesses with local entrepreneurs, and sources of expanding businesses from Atlanta. Education-wise, they mentioned that they'd like satellite college campus, community colleges, more city investment, no trailers or, uh, or overcrowding is what they're looking at there and more school events to get the community directly involved. In housing, there were uh, three items. No more apartments, more housing for over 50 in retirement living, and more single family homes. Recreation was citywide bark, uh, bike and walking trail system, more green space and our parks and a dog park. That was mentioned several times outside seating and picnic areas. Technology was one of the other items we discussed and it, they would like to see a citywide Wi-Fi wireless and the technical college option. Transportation was more and better mass public transportation, shuttle buses, small buses or trolleys doing for you know local routes, divert traffic from 124 and 78 and scenic highway, roundabouts, monorails, road imp and road improvement. Those were the, the ten, about 10 items that we, we vi had in the visioning sessions. We will be having a final vis visioning session at the May 5th Council for Quality Growth meeting. Um, and after this meeting, a final report will be compiled with, with all the information that we have gathered from the input from the citizens, uh, which will be with the help of Eric uh, we'll be doing that and available through his office. And we hope that all of you can um, attend the, this important meeting in May. And if you have, anyone has any questions, uh, that's all I have. Mr. If I could, Mr. Kirkland, number one, I want to thank you and Eric and everybody that was involved in that. I attended all three of those and, and a lot of information gleaned from it that was very informational, I guess is the best way to say it. Um, is there a possibility that synopsis, can you email that to us so that we've got that in our hands? Yes. Well, we were wait, kind of waiting on that last one so okay. that we would have all the input information okay. and we're going to make a final report okay. based with, from the, after that May 5th meeting. Okay. But we do have a, the, the synopsis right now and I, I think you Well, if you need to wait till after May 5th, yeah. that's fine. Just as long as it's on the radar to get done. Sure. It's good. Thanks. Yeah, we plan on, plan on doing that, present that Super. to you. Thank you. Okay. Just Thank clarification, you. Mr. Mr. Kirkland, the, the May 5th meeting you're discussing is the one that's going to be at 10 o'clock in the morning yes. in, con in conjunction with the Commerce Club. And right, that, that is correct. That should be an excellent meeting. I yes. think that was a great idea. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Kirkland. We have no consent agenda under our old business. We have a public hearing. We have second reading consideration action on approval on the alcohol ordinance revision and fee schedule. Do I have a motion to modify this to a first reading and to waive the first reading until our April? April 27th. 27th meeting. Thank you. Yes, motion to uh, 
move to the April 27th for a second read and have the first read tonight on the alterations to the existing alcohol ordinance. There is a motion. Is there a second? Second. A second by Mr. Howard, motion by Mr. Manuel. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. That's five in favor. Those opposed, zero opposed. The motion stands approved. Item B is first reading on ZOA 15-01. Um, for the record in the work session, Councilman Emanuel is agreed to be the sponsor for this agenda item. Is that correct? Um, we have first reading. Do I have a motion to waive the first reading and place it on our April 27th agenda? Motion to waive first reading. Put it on the April 27th agenda. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by uh, Mr. Howard. All those in favor, signify raise your right hand. Five in favor. All those opposed, zero opposed. The motion stands approved. New business. It's consideration and action on stage lease approval for Overcomers House. Um, I did misspeak in the work session. It was the gala that they, when they're using the community room that they had changed the date on. Um, the stage lease is August 1st. Do I have a motion to approve, um, to authorize the mayor to execute an agreement with Overcomers House for use of the stage um, for August 1st? So moved. There's a motion um, by Mayor Pro Tem Witz. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Emanuel. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Five in favor. All those opposed. Zero opposed. The motion stands approved. Consideration action on stage lease approval for City of Grayson. Do I have a motion to allow the mayor to execute agreement with the City of Grayson for use of the stage for their Grayson's day? So moved. Uh, motion by Mayor Pro Tem Witz. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Emanuel. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. That's five in favor. All those opposed, zero opposed. The motion stands approved. C, consideration action on approval of contract with Gresham Smith and Partners for traffic signal and sign bridge concept and costing to add to CFI. Mr. Sanders, you want to give us some background information? Sure, Mayor. This is a, uh, um, a continuing work a work in in progress on the CFI um, the CFI intersection is going to be our major I, I guess major transportation artery coming into the city and the discussion that we've had in the past is what can we do to make this all that it can be to have it represent the city when it comes to what we want to look like, how we want to move traffic through. <coughs> and there are, there are several things that uh, in the original plan by DOT, um, we had an opportunity to go in and say, well, can we, can we brighten that up a little bit? Can we change that? Can we make an investment in our future to where when people go through that intersection, they get a positive view of Snellville and our community? Uh, we started with uh, landscaping. Uh, for the median that will be uh, uh, throughout the project from, from east to west. Uh, Mayor and Council approved funds to, to dress up the landscaping there. Uh, we're also going to be uh, shielding uh, with, with greenery and more landscaping the uh, infrastructure, like detention ponds. This is the, the third and final stage of that, where basically we would be taking span wires. Right now the plan is for... Uh, uh, ugly span wires and poles to go to go all the way across that intersection to put signs and traffic signals on. Uh, this study, in this costing study and feasibility study, uh, would allow us to take those wires down and put up what are called signal bridges and sign bridges, which are much more attractive, uh, and 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 it allows for just a a a better feel for Snellville when people come to town. And this, this next step in the process is actually a two-step process. This is just costing, feasibility, continuing to work with DOT to get their approval, necessary to work with DOT to get their approval. And uh, this first step uh, with, with Gresham Smith is a contract in the, in the amount of $44,488.86. And uh, uh, we've talked about this before. I'm, I'm uh, recommending that this be, be adopted, and I think... Uh, it gets us to the next step, which is the uh, actual construction during the CFI. So, uh, um, as I said, I would uh, recommend the approval of this contract with Gresham Smith. Questions for Mr. Sanders? Mr. Mr. Sanders, where will the um, funds come from? 
this is all SPLOS funding. We, we had set money aside in the 2014 SPLOS budget. Thank you. Um, do I have a motion to authorize the mayor to execute the contract with Gresham, Smith and Partners? So moved. There's a motion by Councilman Emanuel. Is there a second? Second by Mayor Pro Tem Witz. All those in favor, signify raising your right hand. It's five in favor. Those opposed, zero opposed. The motion stands approved. Item D, consideration action on approval of workplace safety policy. Mr. Sanders, you want to give us some background again? Basically, we've worked with uh, the, uh, lo our insurance carrier, local government risk management services, to develop <coughs> several uh, uh, important changes in the way we conduct our, uh, our, our, our safety policy throughout the city. Uh, we've assigned a new safety coordinator. We're going to emphasize this with our employees. And this is just the next step in, in doing that. It's a, uh, a policy that we've never had before. And I'm just asking for mayor and council uh, approval and adoption of this uh, safety policy. Motion to approve the placement of a workplace safety policy here within the city. Howard, is there a second? Second. By Councilman Emanuel. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. It's five in favor. All those opposed, zero opposed. The motion stands approved. That now brings us to our council reports. Mr. Witz. Good evening. Very short meeting tonight. Um, yesterday afternoon, I had the pleasure of attending the Historical Society's meeting, and they had. Um, uh, both David and Chris Snell there giving a presentation about letters that they had received from um, a group in Wisconsin. It, it, evidently, uh, one of the Snells, or Mr. Snell, Thomas Snell's sister, moved to uh, Wisconsin. And um, over the years, they had developed a museum out there. And um, the curator of that museum got in touch with uh, David and Chris Snell and forwarded them hundred letters, is that right? Hundreds of letters, is that right, Nick? Or Ms. Kirkland, is that? Lots of letters, I know there are lots. And, and a, you know, a lot of uh, um, articles and artifacts from the Snell family, including two desks that Thomas Snell made, one for himself, one for his sister. Also, these letters put aside some of the myths as uh, Mr. Ewing has said yesterday, that had come down through the ages um, because these letters now document some of the stories that um, um, of Mr. Snell's life here in, in Snellville. And it was really, really interesting, but I thought it was really just good for the city too because it, it just, um, just kind of gives you a little bit more sense of, of where you live uh, after what you heard yesterday. So hopefully at some point we can get that um, uh, more public so that more people can hear about that story because I think it's a, a good story to tell. It also brings up other stories that brings up questions that they don't have answers to, which is kind of interesting too. So I want to thank the History uh, Historical Society yesterday for putting that on. It was really enjoyable. You had well over 100 people, if I'm not mistaken. I think they said they set chairs up for 100 people and they, had a, they were bringing other chairs in. So it's probably the, the largest group I've seen it since I've been going to historical meetings, but that hasn't been a real long time, three or four years, but it was the largest crowd I've seen. So that was really enjoyable. Other than that, we've got a lot of stuff going on in May. Rest up. We're going to be busy. One more thing. Sorry. Saturday night, we had the um, Snellville Volunteer Banquet. Um, we recognized the people from several groups in the city their number one volunteers, and then from that group of eight people, um, we selected our Marcy Ferris third annual volunteer of the year. Um, there's, uh, let's see, I, I know that there's, um, I'm trying to think of who's here, that was, I don't want to miss anybody. Ronnie, Ronnie Bentley was, was for um, the garden, was it the garden? It was the volunteer of the year for the garden. Is there any, Farmer's, the, market. Farmer's Market, I'm sorry and Marilyn, a second year in a row, and that was for Marilyn Stat, the Stat volunteer. We had a high school 
um, Jojo Castellanos, is that correct? Who won it for the uh, South Cunet High School. Um, Claudette Forbes won it for the garden, for the community garden. And um, uh, Floyd, I'm sorry, that's not named, from the Lions Club. Leon, right. And um, for SNAP, it was uh, Tricia Rollins, who then uh, was the uh, third annual. I'm sorry. I emceed the damn thing. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I, I was, guess I was, uh, there was a lot of awards you got. But anyway, pardon my French. Um, uh, Trisha Rollins was the uh, ultimate Marcy Ferris Volunteer of the Year for Snellville Award winner, the third of the, those awards to be awarded. So congratulations, Trisha. Um, I attended the Historical Society meeting too. I think Tom gave you a lot of detail, but it was very interesting. I was glad I was able to get away from work for a little bit to, to hear David and, and Chris talk about all those memories and the information that they garnered from those letters. And uh, congratulations to Tricia and to all the other uh, volunteers that worked so hard and it's nice that we can finally, you know, officially recognize some of the people that do put in so many hours. Um, at their time and their the commitment that they show we really appreciate it it makes us a great a great city I think um, and really not much else I haven't been doing anything else other than working but just a personal reminder to all of you that your tax returns are due on Wednesday and uh, our office does close at noon so if you want anything done you better call I'd like to add my congratulations to Tricia and all the other winners of the, the awards. I remember when she was a scared little girl <laughs> before she founded Rollins Security. <laughs> but i uh, just like to offer my congratulations. Last Monday at Mellow Mushroom, we had a fundraiser for Give Hunger the Boot, and I'd like to thank everybody who attended. We raised $1,200 for the Southeast Gwinnett Co-op. And on April 25th, Rice Box Restaurant will have their one-year anniversary celebration you can sign up ahead of time and register and they'll give you a free buffet lunch. And they're also using that occasion as a fundraiser for Give Hunger the Boot. So there'll be raffle items, silent auction items, and the illustrious lion dancers will return. That was a big hit at their grand opening and they'll be back. So I'd like you to all come out and help support Give Hunger the Boot with the fundraiser at Rice Box Restaurant. How's everybody doing? Good? Good? You know, I keep looking at the calendar and I keep looking at this year coming and I keep looking at this large event list and things that are going on in our city that are just spectacular. And the only thing I guess I can tell you with through that, encourage others that haven't attended one of these to come out and, you know, at least attend it. You know, come to it. Be a part of it. And it's, it's, you know, it's just a lot of hooks in the water that we can throw, getting people to come out and see how much fun these events are. Uh, there's just a ton of things that we can continue to do and continue to have. Uh, but, we, but, again, we have the greatest volunteer group that, that I've ever been associated with, and I certainly appreciate them. And, again, Tricia, my, my thanks to you again and all the winners. Um, but that's what makes the life in the city and our community different from others is that when you get out here and you start doing these things I've heard story after story is that I just did it one time and it was like boom here you are and there's story after story after story that does that so with regard to some of those things we had the cop cab out the other night as uh, one of the the folks of give hunger the boots also one of the car sponsors so we had a combination deal with that um, if you notice coming in uh, give hunger the boots now got a box that we can take out and put out in events and things and so we want to make sure that we tell our other people again it's a matter of sharing the information we're in such a technology driven informational society that it's real simple to send out a two-word sentence to you know let somebody know something 
Uh, but the year I see just coming is just going to be spectacular, and, and I'm excited about it. Excited about the the changes at Briscoe with, you know, the all the work that's going on there and, and the LCI and so on and so forth. So uh, Monday night this coming, uh, we've got an event that uh, one of our sponsors of the Cop Cab Guide Incorporated is going to work with me on with the Boy Scout troop across the street at the church. And uh, so we're really excited about that, and we're getting a lot more opportunities to get it out in front of things. And we've got some really big announcements in the near future with regard to Give Hunger the Boo, the Southeast Co-op, and you just got to be stay in tune for that because that's going to be a massive, wonderful undertaking if we pull this off. So just keep watching for that. Thank you all all for being a part of this, and thank you all for allowing me to be a part of it. That's the end of the council reports. Now for the mayor's report. Um, we do have a lot of exciting events coming up, but we also have a lot of uh, growth that's going to be happening in the next few months in our city. A lot of new applications coming forward in the city. Um, some of the things Mr. Kirkland talked about, hopefully you'll be seeing in our city soon. I'm sure some of you heard about uh, the stores going in behind the Best Buy and across the street. They've got some new developments that are going to be going on down towards the avenues and, and some here in the Hobby Lobby and, and Kmart Shopping Center. So um, we're growing, which is always a great thing for our economy here in Snellville. Um, I also want to give my personal congratulations to Ms. Rollins. She's out at almost every event, and so thank you for your dedication to this city and for being the um, eyes and ears of your neighborhood as well. So I'm sure they appreciate that. Um, it's not too late if you are interested in the Snellville Days Parade. We have the lineup done, but you have this week if you still want to participate, your organization, it's free to enter. Um, it's great fun. See me if you are still interested, but we need to know by this week if you want to participate in the Snellville Days Parade. Um, also, uh, back in, I guess, October, I started a program called Leadership Snellville. Um, we were happy. We had... 10 people that came through the first class. We had eight people that completed it, and so we're starting the second round. It's an 11-week program, and it will focus on the different departments, different um, parts of the city. Uh, the last class did um, the gift boxes on the town green. They also put a vending machine, a Coke machine, here in the, um, in the hallway here at City Hall and have arranged for the Public Works Department to pick up recycling from the vending machine and so we're looking forward to what the second class will do as far as community project. Um, but if you're interested, applications, in an application, please email me. Uh, and applications are due back by May 5th. The previous class will review those applications, and the next class will start May, May 14th. Uh, they'll meet for 11 weeks on Thursday nights here at City Hall from 6.30 to 8.30. Um, with that, I will close my mayor's report and open it for public comments. Please state your name and address for the record. Marcy Sierra, 1749 Ridgedale Drive. Um, this Snellville leadership, is it open to anyone? Okay, so you don't have to be a citizen of Snellville or anything. Okay. And where are the applications? Okay, thank you. <laughs> 